right. Yeah, Nolte, how you doing, man? Uh, yeah, uh, I know yeah. you're kind of like an adopted Canadian a little bit, so how's it feel to be here for this uh, this big event? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I was really surprised at the amount of people that came out to see me at one of the meet and greets. I didn't think I had that many Canadian fans, but yeah, it's really cool. That's awesome. Um, just how, how are things? I mean, coming off a fight, looking for a fight, where, where are you at right now? Yeah, uh, just uh, definitely, yeah, looking for a fight. I was hoping to fight December time, but that's, that's not realistic at this point. Um, I'm heading over to the PI after this to fix a couple of injuries, but it shouldn't be anything major. Hopefully get out of the first quarter next year, so. Hmm. Is it a little annoying uh, watching this event tonight, seeing that Nice, the <laughs> grounded opponent, that rules change? I know there was a lot of made of it of the fight with Mobstar. Yeah, uh, you know, it is what it is. But it's, uh, it's funny that I, I thought, is that the reason they brought me out to like unveil the rules or something? I'll be the guy to announce it. But yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's funny, whatever. Yeah, I know. I think you had said in another interview uh, after Yair Rodriguez spoke to one of our reporters, Farah Honey, and he kind of mentioned you as a matchup of interest, maybe for Mexico City. Um, is that something you feel could be realistic for you? Yeah, it'd be a great fight, but I heard they're going to London in March as well. Uh, <laughs> the altitude in London is great. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. that w that logistically, that would be a lot better. Yeah, what do you think of just uh, Yair at this point? Obviously, he's you know, being interim champion and stuff. We know he's got a very unique style as well. How do you think that fight would go? Uh, I mean, I think I'd win it, but uh, guy's very good. He's been at the top for a long time. You know, he hasn't been the champion, but he's been around that. He's been sniffing around that area for the whole time, and he's so dangerous. You know, you can never count him out, and uh, he's elite, and I, I think I'm up there too, and I think that kind of fight would prove it. Yeah, and speaking of the top of the division, we just saw what Ilya Tapuria did last weekend. Uh, how impressed were you by his performance, or maybe not? Yeah, very good. Uh, to be honest, I, I felt style-wise, I felt like he would get the win, and uh, I wasn't too surprised he was able to knock him out. You know, Max was leaving very tall when he was coming out of the exchanges. He was coming out of his head in the air, and I, I didn't like it. And also, you know, he's got the most significant strikes received, and that's going to add up. You know, as tough as you are, and as much of a warrior as he is, but also Ilya, credit to him, accurate, hits hard. He said he was going to do it, and he did it. Yeah, and I know you'd love to get that rematch with Max one day, but he announced today 45 is done for him. He's going to be a 55er from now on. Um, does that disappoint you a little? No, no, always the goal is whoever's got the title, you know, and that's what I want. And uh, if he hasn't got the title and he's going up to 55, then whatever, you know. Who do you, beside yourself, who do you think has the best chance of dethroning Ilya? Because uh, I think a lot of people are maybe worried for Volk um, after seeing what he did. Uh, Diego Lopez, who do you think has the best chance? Oh... Uh... Yeah, beside myself. And I, yeah, a lot of people were saying that, like fans and stuff, like, oh, who's going to want to fight him now? Like, you know, we're not in this business because we want to avoid people. I want to fight the best guys in the world, and I feel like I match up pretty good with him. Um, but yeah, Volk, Volk, you can't count him out. You know, I'd like to see him not eight weeks after getting knocked out, you know, with some confidence and all these things. But now uh, Ilya's presence is going to grow even more. You know, Volk fought Max, how many was it, three times? Three times he couldn't do that. So maybe that's going to play on his mind even more. Arnold, uh, I'm just curious if you think moving to 155 is the right move for Max. I mean, he, he just got knocked out, and they're not going to hit any less hard up there. Not saying his chin is gone, but do you feel it's the, the right move? Uh, yeah, I think so. Like at this point in his career, I think he really struggles cutting down to 45. I think he always has. Uh, I don't know if he gets in bad shape after a fight, or gets big. I know he gets big, but yeah, we all do. But um, I don't think necessarily it's the power that people are punching, right? It's, it's how much you're draining yourself. It's the impact that's having on yourself, not the power, you know? It, you can get hit by anyone, it still sucks, but if you're drained, it hurts more. The other thing Max always says is that, you know, he doesn't really spar anymore, so he's not taking those shots in the gym. How much credence do you put into that? I think he started sparring when he fought me. The camp, I, that's what I heard, so I think he's sparring. I think he is sparring now. but. Uh, I've heard of people doing it, but uh, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, maybe if you'd like sparring, play sparring, but I don't, yeah, I don't know. Last one. Uh, when you look at Ilya Tapuria, does he have what it takes to be a long-term champ like a Max Holloway, like a Volkanovski, like an Aldo? Yeah, like, look who he just beat. He beat back-to-back. Uh, -back. He beat Volk and Holloway with knockouts. Yeah, yeah, he, you know, those guys are around the top for forever and no one could beat those guys, so he definitely can be.
But I think there's always new people coming. You know, there's always people gunning for different matchups. Once you get figured out, you figure it out. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Arnold. So, um, obviously, coming off the losses of Max and, and Movsar as well, look, you're really close in that Max fight, and obviously, Movsar was a close fight too. Yeah. MMA moves really quickly. I mean, if the results had went your way, you would have been trusting yourself up into a title shot. It must have been a, a bit of a pressure coming in against Giga in, in June or July when you took him on over in the UK to get yeah. that win. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, it's. The pressure's good, it's, it's what brings out the fire, you know, it makes you 10% better in all aspects. But, uh, especially with the most violent losses, in my head, I didn't feel, obviously, you go out there, you get dominated, you get ragged, or you get knocked out, you're probably going to feel pretty shit about yourself, but I felt like the fight went great, you know, I, I felt like I deserved the win, and obviously the stupid issue with the knees. So I didn't really go back and sit there and look at anything too much, you know, I didn't sit there and... I was a bit depressed because I was injured with like a injury from the camp. Then obviously having a loss and missing out, getting back in the picture. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Did you find it hard to adjust to the time change over there for that card? Oh yeah, I uh, well I had a nightmare. Like after the last sparring for the camp, I crashed my car into a barrier. Uh, I was half asleep like after sparring. I drive it home and then uh, yeah, well I was fine, but. Um, my car was not, and I didn't hit anyone, so that's good. And uh, but yeah, and then like I didn't sleep from. I did the weight cut, and then I didn't sleep until like the Monday after the fight because I just uh, yeah, it was fucked up. So yeah, I did the weight cut. I had like four hours sleep, and then I think it was like 36 hours until I fought. I was like taking cold showers before the fight. I was like doing espresso shots, like slapping myself. Yeah, I was freaking out. Yeah. I mean, that kind of tells me that if an opportunity like that came around again, would you hesitate in taking a fight at, like, all hours of the morning? I mean, for the right opportunity, it's worth it, right? But then, you know, certain people sitting there saying the same thing, people maybe lose their championship because they fucked up and, you know, yeah, it kind of sucks. Who do you think is the name to you should be facing next to put yourself into title contention again? Uh... I think the position I'm in, anyone above me, but like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's been talked about a lot. Ortega's a guy that's uh, been talked about. The, after Holloway, I asked for Yaya or Ortega, you know, there was never any sort of sniff of anything, but you know, Yaya mentioned it, so I'm sure that's looking more realistic now. I know you're a bit of a foodie as well, Arnold. Have you been trying the, the local cuisine here? Oh, you're I kind of familiar with Canadian cuisine anyway. I don't know if there's much cuisine going on right ahead, and I don't want to, like, you know, slander the place, but I haven't really found much great cuisine. Maybe the beers, I don't know. This seems to be a good drinking culture, eh? I like that's That's fun. <laughs> Thank you, Arnold. No worries. worries. Last one, how long are we planning to grow the mullet here? I don't know. It's actually starting to get annoying at the back. It's like tickling <laughs> the back of my neck. So that's usually when I have a haircut. Like if the fringe starts tickling my eyebrows, I'm like, right, it's out. But uh, it's hanging on for now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you.